In this video, we're going to take a look at how to construct and interpret an interval estimate of a population mean for sigma unknown. We're going to look at the t-distribution and how to use it in constructing an interval estimate for a population mean, as well as how to do interval estimation for the population mean with the help of Excel. So now we're going to look at the second case where sigma is unknown to us. And this means that we're going to have to make use of a sample estimate in place of sigma. So our interval estimate will be x bar plus or minus a t value, which is a critical value from the t distribution, multiplied by s, which is the estimate for sigma, divided by the square root of n. And this estimate will come from our sample. So S is estimated from the sample. It's a sample standard deviation. And this T value comes from the T distribution. So the T distribution is symmetric around zero. And it's characterized by a parameter that we call the degrees of freedom. And this is calculated as N minus one. So the T distribution gives you the area to the right of a value. And this is different from the Z because the Z tables give you the area to the left of a value. We're going to take a look at how to read the tables further on. So as we've mentioned, it's symmetric around zero and it's characterized by the degrees of freedom calculated in this case as N minus one and N is your sample size. But there are other cases that make use of the T distribution and they have different ways of calculating the degrees of freedom based on the context they're being used in. Now the T distribution, it tends to the standard normal distribution when the degrees of freedom are increased. So as the degrees of freedom tend towards infinity, then the T distribution tends to the Z, which is the standard normal distribution. Then also where you have large cases, that is when your sample is at least 30, then the T distribution also approaches the standard normal distribution. Now we can see that from our confidence interval, X bar is going to be the point estimator. T alpha over two times S over the square root of N is the margin of error and S is the sample standard deviation in place of sigma because sigma is unknown and n is your sample size. S over root n is the estimator for the standard error of x bar. And from the graph, we can see that the shaded area is the confidence coefficient and it's equal to one minus alpha and alpha is the level of significance. So the unshaded areas are equal to the level of significance and because of symmetry, we can see that either tail is equal to alpha over two. So the lower T value is minus T alpha over two with N minus one degrees of freedom. And as a result of the reflection rule, then we can see that the upper value will be T alpha over two with N minus one degrees of freedom. Now let's take a look at how to read off from the, t value, from the t table. So as mentioned, the t table gives you areas to the right of a value. So from the t table, we can see that the top row is equivalent to the area in the upper tail. So we have that equal to alpha over two. And the first column is the degrees of freedom, which is n minus one. So the values inside are equal to T alpha over two values that you will need for your margin of error. And as the degrees of freedom increase, we can see that when the degrees of freedom is equivalent to infinity, then the last row of the T table with infinite degrees of freedom is equivalent to the Z alpha over two values for the standard normal distribution. Now let's take a look at this example. Given that N is equal to 15, X bar is 53.87, and the standard deviation from the sample S is equal to 6.82,
let's calculate a 95% confidence interval. So as you can see, sigma is unknown. That's why we're making use of S. And we've been asked to calculate a 95% confidence interval. So our confidence coefficient is 0 0.95. So our level of significance is 1 minus 0 0.95 and we get 0 0.05. So this means that alpha over 2 will be 0 0.025. Now our degrees of freedom which we'll need to read off our t value is n minus 1. So that is 15 minus 1 and we have 14 degrees of freedom. So from the t table, 14 degrees of freedom And 0 0.025 as the area in the upper tail is going to give us a T value of 2.145. So now let's calculate our 95% confidence interval from you. So this will be X bar plus or minus T alpha over 2 times S over the square root of M. And on our graph, we can see that the confidence coefficient is the area in the middle shaded. Then we have alpha over 2 on either side as 0 0.025. And our T value is 2.145. Our degrees of freedom were 14. So if we make use of our Excel functions, we're going to use the t.inv function. So to get our value of T, we're going to say equals t dot inv and in brackets it will be alpha over 2, which is the area to the right, comma df, which is your degrees of freedom. So in our case, this will be equals t dot inv in brackets 0 0.025, comma 14, and this will give us 2.144787. Or you can make use of the t dot inv dot 2t function, and in this case, in the brackets, we're going to place alpha, the level of significance, comma df, the degrees of freedom. And we don't split alpha into two because by making use of this function, Excel is going to do that on our behalf. So this is going to be equals t dot in dot two t in brackets 0 0.05 comma 14. And this will give us 2.144787. So please be sure to make use of these functions and not the old functions because they'll give you incorrect T values. So now our formula is going to be 53.87 plus or minus 2.145, which is the T value, multiplied by 6.82 over the square root of 15. And we find the margin of error as 3.78. So this means our interval will be 53.87 minus 3.78 as the lower value, and the upper value will be 53.87 plus 3.78, which is the margin of error. So this gives us an interval of 50.09 to 57.65. So we are 95% confident that the mean is between 50.09 and 57.65. Alternatively, you can say the probability that the mean is between 50.09 and 57.65 is 0 0.95. So if we're interested in finding the level of significance using Excel, we can make use of the t.dist function. So our level of significance will be equal to 2 times 1 minus t dot dist, and in brackets, it will be the t alpha over 2 value that you have, comma df, the degrees of freedom, comma true, because you want the area that is accumulated. So this will be equal to 2 times 1 minus 0 0.97501, and this gives us a final answer of 0 0.04998 which is approximately 0 0.05 when rounded up. Or you can make use of the t.dist.2t function. And this would be t.dist.2t and in brackets, it will be the t alpha over 2 value, comma df, the degrees of freedom. 
So when we replace those in the function, it will be 2.145,14. And it also gives us the same value, which is 0 0.04998. And that we approximate it to be 0 0.05. So you need to keep in mind that it must be a positive T value that you input into the function. So in this case, we found that the margin of error is 3.78. And that tells us that the sampling error, which is the absolute difference between X bar and mu, will be at most 3.78. So 95% of the time, the sampling error will be 3.78 or less. So we can see that this goes together with the probability statement in video one, since the probability that mu will lie within 3.78 units of X bar is equal to 0 0.95. So the interpretation of the confidence interval will depend on the context of the problem you have been presented. And this interpretation remains exactly the same as the case where sigma is known. We can also make use of Excel functions to construct a confidence interval. So our Excel functions are going to calculate the margin of error for us. So this will be equals t dot in dot two t. And in brackets, it will be alpha the level of significance, comma, n minus 1, which is the degrees of freedom. So this formula is going to return to us the t value such that the area to the right is equal to alpha over 2. So we're going to multiply that by s, which is the standard deviation from your sample, divided by the square root of n. So our shortcut formula is equals confidence dot t because it's a t distribution. And in brackets, it's going to be alpha level of significance, comma s, which is the sample standard deviation, comma n, which is your sample size. So once again, it's going to take into account that it will need to split the value of alpha into two so that it can return to us the correct margin of error. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to construct and interpret an interval estimate of a population proportion, as well as how to do interval estimation for the population proportion with the help of Excel.